Hi, I'm Robert Standifer from the Bot Framework team, and today I'm going to show you how to quickly and easily create a bot with the Azure Bot Service. The Azure Bot Service makes creating a bot really easy. When you create a bot with the Azure Bot Service, Azure does a lot of the work for you. It provisions the bot, creates a bot project based on the Bot Builder SDK, and it publishes the bot to Azure. All you need to create a bot with the Azure Bot Service is an Azure subscription. If you don't have an Azure subscription, you can register for a trial at azure.com by clicking Free Account. The first thing we need to do for our bot is set up the bot hosting. So go to portal.azure.com and log in. Click New, pick AI and Cognitive Services, and then pick Bot Service. Enter an app name. This will be the name of your bot, and it will be the subdomain in the bot's URL. I'll name mine ConnectDemo1235. So the URL for my bot will be connectdemo1235.azurewebsites.net. Choose the Azure subscription you want to use. If you only have one subscription, it will default to that subscription. In the Resource Group section, you can create a new resource group for your bot, or you can choose an existing resource group. I'm going to leave the default, which is a new resource group with the same name as my bot. If I was creating a whole bunch of bots, I might create a new resource group called Bots and then put all of my bots in it. Now you can choose a hosting plan. There are two plans for an Azure service, Azure Bot Service bot. A bot that uses an app service plan is a standard Azure web app. With the app service plan, you allocate a predefined capacity with predictable costs and scaling. A bot with a consumption plan is a serverless bot that runs on Azure Functions. A bot on the consumption plan can scale to handle huge traffic spikes. With the App Service plan, you can set up continuous deployment and publish a bot from Visual Studio. You can also use sample code for the Bot Builder SDK. I'm going to choose the App Service plan for my bot. Click Create, and Azure will set up your bot. This will take a few minutes. When the provisioning is complete, you'll get a notification that the deployment succeeded. Click Go to Resource, and you can continue with the rest of the setup. OK, next, we need to choose a programming language and a template for the bot. The Azure Bot Service supports two programming languages, C Sharp and Node.js or JavaScript. You can choose either C Sharp if you're a .NET developer, or Node.js if you're a JavaScript or Node developer. I'm going to choose C Sharp for today. Next, we we'll pick a template for our bot. This will, the template will cause the Azure Bot Service to set up a bot project with the libraries and code samples for the particular template. A basic bot creates just a simple dialog that echoes back the user's input. A form bot uses Formflow with C Sharp or Waterfalls with Node.js to collect input from a user in a guided conversation. A language understanding bot uses the Lewis Cognitive Service to enable natural language understanding capabilities in the bot. A question and answer bot uses the Q&A Maker Cognitive Service to help answer questions from users, such as an interactive FAQ. And a proactive bot uses Azure Functions to kick off events from the bot on the user's behalf. You can get a lot more detail about the templates in the documentation. I'm going to choose Basic. This gives me a really simple bot that I can customize. Next, we need to set up authentication. Bots use Microsoft App ID and password when you set it up with the Azure Bot Service. So click Create Microsoft App ID and Password. You'll probably be prompted to log in. I'm using my Microsoft account. You'll notice there are two fields that are pre-populated. The first is the app name that we set up earlier, and the second is the app ID that's generated by the application registration portal. Copy this app ID, go back to the portal, and paste it into the Microsoft app ID from the Microsoft app registration portal box. Then go back to the app registration portal and click Generate an app password to continue. Highlight this password and click Copy. 
We might want to save this to Notepad or somewhere else for later. Click OK and then click Finish and go back to the bot framework. Then paste the password from the Microsoft App Registration Portal here. Once your bot's created, if you ever need to change these, there's a settings window in which you can create a new Microsoft App ID and or a new password for your bot if you lose that. <clears throat> so click Create Bot. This process takes a little while. So what's happening here is Azure's provisioning the bot, setting it up, creating the bot project, and deploying it to the app service. So we'll sit and wait for a few minutes while this process completes. Great. Now the bot's created, and we can try it out right here in Azure by clicking Test. The bot is, that uses the basic template is really simple. It just echoes the input back to the user. I want to customize the bot to make it a little bit more interesting. There are three different ways I can edit my bot source code. I can open the online code editor and edit it directly in Azure. I can download the zip file, edit my bot using Visual Studio, and then deploy back to Azure. Or I can set up continuous deployment from source control with Visual Studio Team Services or GitHub. And every time I make a change to my bot and push it to Visual Studio Team Services or GitHub, the code will be automatically deployed to Azure. I'm going to edit the code directly in the online code editor. So click Open Online Code Editor, and a new window will appear. On the left side, we can see all the files that make up the bot. On the right side is an editor window and window that contains other information as we use the different apps in the co online code editor. The two files that primarily make the bot work are Messages Controller and Dialogs. Messages Controller handles the communication between the bot and the bot framework service. And the Dialogs, in this case echodialog.cs, handles the communication between the bot and the user. So Dialogs implement this iDialog interface to handle the communication between bots and the people that are using them. So if we look at line 22, we can see this await context.postasync message that says, you said. If we go back to our bot and we say, hi, the bot will reply with, you said, hi. I want the bot to say something different. So I'm just going to highlight this text and change it to, thank you for saying something really simple. And now that I've changed the code, it automatically saves. As we can see up here, it says saved in the upper right corner. Go on the left-hand navigation and click Open Console. Type build.command, build.cmd, and hit Enter. This will build the bot for you on Azure and automatically deploy it for you. So it sets up the various libraries and dependencies handles the application deployment to the Azure App Service. It's much the same process if you were to build this locally, although some slightly different libraries. OK, great. It's finished successfully. Now, if I go back to the portal and I say, hi, first time you say hi after you've built, of course, it's putting the bot into memory and everything. So it says, thank you for saying hi. Excellent. So our change worked great. 
I could do the same thing in Visual Studio, as I mentioned previously, by downloading the zip file and doing it there, or of course, pushing to GitHub or Visual Studio Team Services if I've set that up. So now that our bot is a little bit more interesting, if not compelling, we can connect to channels. So to do that, just click Channels and choose the channel that you would like to set up. Each channel has its own setup requirements, so you just need to check out the documentation for each one to learn how to connect to this, that specific channel. Skype and web chat are pre-configured for you, so your bot is automatically set up to run on Skype, and it's automatically set up to run on web chat. Web chat is the web chat control, which you can embed in your own website, and you can see the web chat control here in the portal. Everything we've covered today is in the documentation. To get to the documentation, go to docs.microsoft.com, then click Bot Framework, and you can see this layout of all the different things that you can do in the documentation. To see the documentation for the walkthrough we did today, click Get Started with Bots, and choose Azure Bot Service Quick Start. And this is the walkthrough that we went through. To learn more about the connecting to channels, expand How To Guides. So as you saw in the demo, creating a bot with the Azure Bot Service is really easy and really fast. And by using one of the templates, you can add awesome additional functionality to your bot. From this point, check out the documentation for all the information you need to create great bots, and also look at the samples for inspiration for awesome things you can do with your own bot. Thanks very much.